I want to discuss and teach something that's very different to most people. But it is the laws of scripture. We want to talk about the result of the death of leadership. We want to talk about the death, the result, the after effect of the death of leadership I want everyone to listen and listen real good many that are watching millions and to the many hundreds that are here some of us came from churches or religious institutions where the bishop elder or pastor, whatever title he had, died. He may have been strict in what he knew. He may have been bold in what he knew. He may have been strong in what he knew. Bishop passed away And sometime he appoints someone, but he don't take time to evaluate the someone. Because he's more focused on the kernel side of the church than on the spiritual development of God's people. When any preacher focus more on the kernel side of the church, that's when you find him leaning to his family to take over. So he automatically feels as though his son should be the next in line because it's his son. And if he ain't got a son, he'll throw his daughter up there. Yeah. Or he'll get his nephew. Somebody that's connected to him by blood. He ain't looking whether your life is right or wrong. He's not even looking whether you know how to teach. He's not even looking whether you got a good report. He's not investigating whether you love money or not. He's not looking whether you're out there making babies. He's looking from the outward perspective and not looking at what you consist of. Sometimes he look at the height of your stature or your educational background, what university you came from, how good you can speak, how you can say supercalifragilistic and espialidocious. He's looking for someone who can excite the people, but not someone who can give the people insight. So in many cases, and I mean many, when the leader dies, another thing he don't consider, many of them, I'm the one that I'm appointing does he have a vision if he don't have a vision the Bible says the people perish if he have no vision he cannot expand the existing work and if he don't have leadership skills, he cannot maintain the work that fell in his hands. 
Am I right, I said? As a result, the work of many men who may have been sincere have collapsed. The Bible says in the book of Psalms and in the book of Acts, let one die and one scripture says let another take his office but then Acts said let another take his bishopric. bishopric. I want both. First in the book of Acts chapter 1. Someone said Pastor Jennings this is unusual. Are you trying to tell us something? You, you about to die? No, be cool. I ain't going nowhere no time soon. It's not God's will. Thank God. It's not God's will. Thank God. After you finish that, I want Musa. Musa. Moses. He did a very spiritual thing. So Israel will not be handicapped. That's right. All right, follow me. First in the book of Acts chapter 1. Let's get Psalms first. First in the book of Psalms 109. And we're at verse 8. Listen. Psalms 109 and at verse 8. All right. Let his days be few. Let his days be few. And let another take his office. All leaders is on a timeline because no man is eternal. And if no man is eternal, then we must be careful and not careless with the souls of God's people. Many bishops, when they had what some folk call a storefront church, a little church, was firm, solid. But then when more people came in and the tithing came fatter and the offering plate became more full, it affect his soundness, his strictness, and his firmness. Because now the money and the crowd replaced his spiritualism. And the firmness of scripture policy start to fade away. And now he ceased to preach God's word. Now he's more bent on opinion because he's afraid to lose this growing crowd. And he's willing to do anything to keep this crowd. Are you listening? You bishops, you preachers, you so-called apostles that are listening. Your first priority is to please God. Our first priority is never to please the flesh. Our first priority is to please God. And pleasing God will put you at odds with the flesh. So the reason why many bishops or overseers refuse to preach strict, sound doctrine. One, the first one he don't want to offend is his wife. Because he's afraid of his bed turning to Antarctica. He don't want to offend his children. And he don't want to offend the board of directors yeah. that write his check. Yeah. Are you listening? 
So as a result of such, he will put his self-righteous greed above the agenda of God. Rules in church can change, but doctrine, it never changed because doctrine is written. The Bible says in Psalms, Psalms 109 and verse 8, and then we we'll get asked, and then I want to give Brother Moses. Amen. All right? Let his days be few. Let his days be few. And let another take his office. Amen. Eventually, bishops die. That's right. That's right. And you that are watching and you that are here, have you ever came from a church where the bishop had some form of stand? And then when he died, the entire church became unrecognizable. until they actually look like an entire different denomination. No longer believe it's one God. What happened? When a man is seasoned in God and that leader was prayerful, fasting, seeking God for knowledge and was being guided by the hand of the Most High. But then someone come after him, he don't ever fast. He's not prayerful. He had no interest in scriptural principle. He lived by opinion. He's a showboater. He just get up and talk to get compliments from the people. He don't love you enough to care whether you go to hell or not. The concern of your soul is not on his plate. So his approach towards those that have been left in his care, his approach is he don't care. So, slowly but surely, he started to dismantle rules that will govern the people to be closer to God. Are you listening? He will start to surround himself with worldly preachers. Worldly organizations. And because he's weak, they will convince him this is not necessary. That's right. That is not necessary. You don't have to baptize in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't worry about the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue and some false prophet tell him, I got the Holy Ghost and I ain't never spoke in tongue. Hey, 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 start moving. The only way followers sway with him is because they never got the word in them to begin with. That's right. Solomon says, Who knows? In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 2. Ecclesiastes, the second chapter. And that's verse 18. Verse 18. Yea. Yea, I hated all my labor. I hate all my work. Which I had taken under the sun. Which I have taken under the sun. Because. Because. I should leave it unto the man that shall be after me. This is what the Holy Ghost brought today. Amen. Amen. Solomon says, I hated my work. 
I hated all my labor. All of it. All my labor. All the work. And let us remember it was God who purposed and moved on Solomon to build him a house. That's right. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. But out of all this work, let us remember God dealt with Solomon. That's right. The Lord appeared to Solomon. The man was given wisdom from God on high. But look at the wise preacher whom the Lord dealt with and the Lord foreordained him. Yeah, I hate God's people. That's right. That's right. Amen. Now he's in leadership position. And look at what he's saying. Yeah, I hate it. Of what? I hate it. I've hated all my labor. All my labor. Which I had taken under the sun. Which I have taken under the sun. Because I should leave it unto the I man. I should leave it to the man. That shall be after me. That come after me. And who knows? And then when I leave it to him, who knows? Whether he shall be a wise man. that man going to have wisdom? Or a fool. Or a fool. Oh Amen. Who knows? This is what the Holy Ghost want to convey to you. Amen. Who knows? A true God sent messenger. Amen. This scripture haunts him. I can tell you this because God made me a preacher. And this scripture haunts me to this day. Amen. Amen. Well, Pastor Jennings, can't you prevent someone from being a fool and pick them yourself? A man can start out right. And then the work goes through his head and he turns to a fool. That's right. The pulpit yeah. is a place of authority. Yes, a lot of men cannot handle authority. That's right. Talk to me. It's easy to find a man who cannot handle authority because even when he's under leadership, he always try to itch to get others to see how he sounds. He'll start giving out tapes and DVDs of himself because he wants folks' approval. Look at what I sound like. Look at what I sound like. He wanted to be about him. And if he become leader, he would lead him right to hell. That's right. Amen. What you say? So Moses hmm. did something. Yeah. That sticks with me just as tight as the other scripture in Ecclesiastes. Well, bring it on. Listen. In the book of Numbers chapter 27 and at verse 15. What is it? And Moses spake unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Moses spake to the Lord. Saying, let the Lord. Let the Lord. The God, the God, of, God of the spirits. The of God. All, the God. The God of the spirits. Of the spirits. Of all flesh. Of all flesh. Set a man over the congregation. Set a man over the congregation. Which may go out before them. Which may go out before them. And which may go in before them. Which and may go in before them. And which may lead them out. You got to have someone to preach you out of sin. That's right. And for someone to preach you out of sin, he cannot be afraid to stand for everything that God said. That's right. How much you speak in tongue as a minister don't mean nothing. No. You must be tested as a minister before you become a leader. Oh, yeah. 
you must be challenged as a student. If you love bragging about yourself, you have proven you can't accept praise from others. You don't teach and sit around to wait for a pat on the back. You teach to develop God's people. Am I right, I said? We don't teach to compete. We ain't trying to outdo nobody. The book of scriptures is food for our soul. And ministers everywhere in the world must be taught how to handle and serve such a delicate dish. There's a recipe to living right. Are you listening? Moses did what? Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh. Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh. Set a man over the congregation. Set a man over the congregation. Which may go out before them and which may go in before them. And what? And which may lead them out. Lead them out. And which may bring them in. That the congregation of the Lord be not as sheep which have no shepherd. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, I can hear the Holy Ghost all in it. Amen. It isn't God's will. Amen. That's just sheep. No shepherd. Be without a shepherd. That's right. But the shepherd's job is to lead you to green pastures. That's right. But today, men have died. And others have took their bishopric yes. and have took the word of God and just threw it out of churches. That's right. That's right. I'm hearing now from different ministers, elders, bishops, deacons, mothers, men and women from Bishop Lawson's organization. churches of our Lord Jesus Christ of the apostolic faith. They bishop passed about two years ago now, Bishop Bonner. Yeah. And I'm hearing from countless of them. When men step in the pulpit with no anointing, you can't leave God's sheep. Am I right, I said? When men have no anointing, that means God ain't dealing with you. You need an anointing to lead God's people. That's right. Without it, you cannot lead God's people. It doesn't matter how good you are as expressing words. It takes an anointing from God to lead God's people. Amen. God, read some more of that with Moses. Still in the book of Numbers, chapter 27, at verse 17. And then I want what God told brother Joshua. Right, amen. Now let us remember Moses died, did he not? Yeah. And the Lord buried him. That was an honor within itself. I mean the Lord gonna think enough of a corpse that he won't even let no people handle you. He takes you. He kill you, then he bury you. That alone is an honor. And then allow your spirit to stand next to the mediator and have a discussion about your death, burial, and resurrection. Amen. 
Moses died. But then Moses had a brother, Aaron. Sister, Miriam. And Aaron and Miriam spoke against their blood brother, which was their leader, Moses. Because he married an Ethiopian woman. And God stepped in. God didn't care nothing about it was his blood. God smote his sister Miriam with leprosy. Turned to white as snow. And when Aaron saw that, he cried out. Not only that, when Moses was up on a mountain receiving the commandments from Jehovah, Israel, the church, rose up the play. Now let me remind you, not only was Aaron Moses' brother, but Aaron was the high priest. And Aaron's sons were priests. Yes. Ithamar, yes. Eleazar, yes. Abihu, yes. and Nadab, yes. sons of Aaron. Yes. Think of it. Yes. God designed garments yes. for the priests. Yes. And there was more things on the high priest's garment than the priest that was under Aaron. Are you listening? Yes. But when Israel rose up to play, uh -huh. Joshua yeah. wouldn't be in the play. No, no, no. The Bible says Joshua was Moses' minister. Yes, sir. Joshua was waiting yes. for his teacher to come back from the mountain. Yes. Israel, they wanted to have some fun and change beliefs. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Because in their mind, the overseer was gone. He wasn't dead. The man wasn't dead and they rose up and changed. That's right. So in most cases, before leadership died, the change started to take place. Doctrine cease. Strictness, yes. cease. Yes. In other words, the necessary things that it takes to get you into the kingdom is tossed out. Yes. 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 Now, Israel did not ask Joshua no. to make us a calf. Oh, no. No. Because they knew Joshua didn't play that. <laughs> so they went to Moses' blood brother. Aaron. Aaron, make us gods to go before us. Because this Moses, look how slight they said it. This Moses that brought, look, I brought us out the land of Egypt. We don't know what become of him. Become of him. This is the way many men do when a strict leader died. They tried to get the people to forget him and try to make it like they built this work. You are building a working off of a platform supplied to you. They went right to Aaron. What did Aaron suggest? Uh, Break off your earrings and your bracelets and your jewelry. You come to the right one because I'm weak. Now, Aaron's mentality contradicts the way people think today. Because the way people think today, wow, if that's your brother, he should have what it takes. Who said so? If that's your son, he should have what it takes. Who said so? I 
trust your feeble opinion. That's right. Who say so? That's right. We. Joshua yeah. was a minister. Yeah. And God said something to Joshua mm -hmm. that I'm sure and confident. That's right. Or it take God that he gave him the utmost encouragement. As I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Joshua, I want you to observe, to do, hallelujah, according to all that's written. And God told Joshua, you do this, I will make thine way prosperous, and I will give you good success. Hallelujah. All you leaders, Go ahead. you're going to die. Many of you bishops are writing me, asking me what I consider taking over your church or your organization. I don't mind taking over no one church or organization, but I will not bow to fleshy stipulations. If the word of God is good for first church of the Lord Jesus Christ, it will be good enough for you. If a man don't want his work to be ran by God's word, keep your bricks. Keep your electricity. You can have your motor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're going to die one day. Amen. Jesus. In the flesh, the leader of the apostles. Before he died, he told his followers, I go away. And ye shall see me no more. But I'm going to teach you something before I go. I got to give you instructions that repentance. And remission of sins should be preached in my name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, because you are my witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father on you. Now, when I go, you will need the Spirit, so you wait. You wait. I told you to go in all the world. But you can't go until you wait. Right. What are you waiting for? The Holy Ghost. Right. Go, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wait until you're being due with power from on high. You need power to fight the devil. Right. You need power to lead God's people. Go right. right to God. Jesus himself left the people in good hands. Now, think of it. In the midst of Jesus' ministry, one of them, one of them, one of them, was a traitor yeah. have not I chosen you twelve listen now in the book of St. John chapter 6 and at verse 70 yes Jesus answered them have not I chosen you twelve have not glory to God yes. I chosen you twelve and one of you one of you is a devil if Jesus knew that he had an apostle that he selected 
He the one chose Judas. And picked him. But he knew that he was a devil. That's right. That's right. Judas loved money. If any of you ministers love money, you ain't fit to minister here. You're not fit. Judas loved money until 30 pieces of silver he betrayed Jesus. That's right. Do you know what an honor it was to walk with Jesus? I mean, talk with him. Handle him and be baptized by him. Money. Love of money, the root of all evil. Then entered Satan. Listen. Now in the book of St. Luke, chapter 22, and at verse 3. Then entered the devil. Into Judas. Into surnamed, Judas. Surnamed Iscariot. Surnamed Iscariot. Being of the number of the twelve. Being one of the twelve. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains. How Wait a minute. Hmm. You see, he had another agenda. That's right. He was already, he was living two lives. That's right. That's right. That's right. Hanging with Jesus. That's right. And behind Jesus' back, yeah. he was already communing. With the chief priests. With chief priests. And captains. That's exactly the way men do now. Yeah. I've had men that used to be in first church, but behind the back of leadership, they was communing with false prophets who got false teaching and then try to creep it in false church. And we had to come with the exterminator of the gospel. That's right. That's all right. That's right. If you cannot respect and follow leadership who follows Christ, yeah. you will never be a leader. Because the way you treat God, man, and you go out on your own, do the same thing is going to happen to you. Listen to that Judas character. And he went his way. Two-faced it. Double-minded. Unstable. But yet fulfilling prophecy. That's right. For the prophets talked about Judas and didn't call his name but manifest his deeds. They shall betray me for 30 pieces of silver. That's right. Listen. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains. And how he might betray him unto them. Men do that now. They go behind the back of leadership. You know, don't tell Pastor Jennings, I'm, I'm going to start a church. You know, I'm going to start a church. I'm going to start off by having service in my house and I'm going to give you some CDs and whatnot and pass it around. You know, you listen to that and tell me what you think. Right. That's right. Start a church within a church. Within a church. Because everybody in that comes to the building is not strong. That's right. And a lot of people don't get the word in them that makes them rooted and grounded and settled. And those who don't get it in them, they, they are the ones right away. They're so lightheaded, you can tell them any dumb thing under the sun and make it appear like revelation, and they'll eat it up. That's why Zephaniah said the priests and the prophets are light and treacherous persons, and they have done violence to the law. Uh -huh. Then entered Satan into Judas. Then the devil came to Judas, being of the number of the twelve. He was one of the twelve, and he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains. Yes, how he might betray him unto them. Wait a minute. That means if he communicated with them, how he may how do it. That's right. They was determined to help him get it done. That's, That's right. right. All right, and they were glad. I know <laughs> Amen. So you will always have someone else in the congregation with the same weak spirit as the weak minister. That's right. You going to start your church? Oh, I've been waiting because when I was there, I was in bondage. That's what they say. I couldn't gamble. I couldn't smoke. I couldn't party. I always had to have my head covered. I'm sick of these long dresses. I want to shake myself once in a while. That's right. 
I'm in bondage when I'm in the truth. Don't you remember what Paul said? Paul said, I'm a prisoner. We that want to be right, God has arrested us. We all are in bondage. Hallelujah. God got his people in bondage that we should be free in him. God don't even want us to be free in nothing else but him. He whom the Son has set free is free indeed. You call living like a sinner freedom? That's not freedom. Real freedom is when I repent of my sins, go down in water in the name of Jesus Christ, have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues, Walk a living life to please God. I got wisdom. I got knowledge. I got understanding. How to battle the devil. The devil try to put me in bondage. Freedom is what I can call God. Any answer me. Glory to God. That's freedom. Hallelujah. That's freedom. Yeah. Freedom is when I can push on heaven yeah. and the creator yeah. Yeah. that made the world yeah. hear my prayer. Yeah. Move heaven. Yeah. Move us. Yeah. The move in my life. That's freedom. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Doing what you want to do, that's not freedom. No. You got it wrong. Doing what you want to do is not freedom. Israel rose up to play. So Israel really was not free. As long as they followed Moses, who followed God, they were free. Had the chance to see the Red Sea open up, see pestilence come, death angel pass right by it. Why? I'm under Moses' law. I'm going to do what Moses said. He let the spies, Moses' law, die without mercy. True freedom? Serving God. Living for God. Hallelujah. That's true freedom. Do you understand? Everybody all right? So bishops, hallelujah. These bishops, these overseers, you die. And another delusion. You try to convince the people that in order for God to raise up a man, he got to come from within your group. No, he has to come from God. And God will bring them out of the body of Christ and the body is not confined to one country or to one city or to one state. Glory to God. All right, son, what did he say? And they were glad if you the mercy. Still in the book of St. Luke, chapter 22 and at verse 5. And they were glad and covenant to give him money. And he promised and sought opportunity to betray him unto them. In when that. a man is an opportunist, yes. Amen. treason is already in him. Already in him. That's right. That's right. That's right. What do you mean? If I'm going to send Brother Minister Etheridge somewhere, and if Minister Harris is an opportunist. He's going to try to convince somebody or even me that Minister Har or Minister Etheridge is unfit to go. Even if he got the lie. In other words, have you ever worked on a job and you knew you had talent and skill 
and you was about to get a promotion and the folks that were so jealous, they just lied on you to the one that was going to give you a promotion. And besides the one investigating what was said, he took what was said and demoted you or didn't give you what was due you. The same thing happened in church. Jealousy run rapids. Let me say to all the ministers around the world, I don't favor none of you. I don't think much of one more than the other. So to get jealous at a brother because he spent time with me, you don't need to be a minister. In fact, you need to grow up as a man. Not only are you unfit to be a minister, you need to grow up as a man. If anything, we should be helpers of one another. Encouraging one another. If Bishop Ferguson's skill of expressing scriptures exceed another brother, then one should not take sides with Bishop Ferguson and look at the brother as less because the Bible says minister according to the ability that God gives. So brothers, don't ever let no congregation pivot you against the other. And you churches, you followers, don't you ever go behind the back of your local minister and trash him to another minister. Am I right, I said? As brothers, we're supposed to be on the Lord's side. Moses said, you got some on the Lord's side. Come on over here. Hallelujah. Praise the name of God. I want you to listen to the Holy Ghost real good. Hallelujah. Listen. And they were glad and covenant to give him money. They were glad to do what? And they were glad and covenant to give him money. They were glad and, and what? And covenant. And covenant. To give him money. What you mean? They were glad and they promised. Promise. Oh man, if you need some cash, we got it. Got, that's right. We got it. And this is the way men that go out on their own. There are a lot of people God calling and send to preach the gospel and then get, the, get, get them to pledge money. Right. We're going to get a church. That's right. You got the money, you ain't got no church. Amen. Amen. All right, listen. Amen. I heard of a case where a brother used to be under me in Alabama. And he left and got deceived. Yeah. by another brother that used to be in the, in the truth of God. Yeah. And one of the brothers told me how he ran up on him and said, what happened? You're not there no more? He said, no, not there no more. The fellow that made himself a preacher convinced this fellow to give almost his entire life savings. Oh, my Lord. And the brother that was dumb enough to do that, his wife wanted to break him across his head. <laughs> when you give money to the truth of God, I'm not the truth of God. Nor am I the church of Jesus Christ. That's right. All your money you give for the work of God, that's exactly where it's going. When Pastor Jen is coming to you and tell you, look, we want to buy a church in such and such a place, this is what I need, that's what we're going to do. Yeah. When I tell you, look, we want to finish the main auditorium, we got to get some sheetrock, and it's called $10,000, that's where it's going. Yeah. 
when I tell you we got to install a uh, central air unit in the lower auditorium and the 66,000, every 66,000 is going toward, and I ain't going to skim off the top. That's right. I fear God too much to rock for him. They love the money. It's the root of all of it. Bible says while some covered it after. They didn't even get it yet. Right. While they covered it after. That's right. They'd have error. From the faith. From the faith they have pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Right. Listen. And they were glad and covenant to give him money. Read quick. And he promised and sought opportunity to betray him unto them in the absence of the multitude. Give it time. I told you Judas was an opportunist. Whatever is in a person, give it time. When they can seize the opportunity to manifest their wickedness, even among brothers and even among sisters. What are the abundance of the heart the mouth speaking? That's right. Whether you love or hate, whether you're no good or you are good, that character will manifest itself if you give it the opportunity. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. What is that? Now in the book of Acts chapter 20 and at verse 28. Parliament. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers. Why did God do this? Why did God do it? To feed the church of God. Feed. No. To fleece no. the church of God. To feed the church of God. No. To fleece them. To feed the church of God. Feed. Ministers? When you minister, you feed, feed the people God's word. That's right. That's right. Amen. Not get up here and throw off on a brother. Not get up here and throw off on a sister. That's right. That's right. If that's the best thing you can do, usher them out. <laughs> that's right. You that are leaders, you are too quick to lay hands on men. Sometimes it takes time to know someone. That's right. I made that mistake years ago and don't have no problems admitting it. Yeah, that's right. Because sometimes years go by and you still don't find out what's in them. That's true. I ordained a brother in Tallahassee, Florida. And believe me, I didn't lay Years went by. I didn't do it quick. Years went by. I was sending him to Europe and all other places. He hardly had no congregation down there. Yeah. But our telecast was dropping. Yeah. And we were sending people to him. Yeah. Churches start, his church started growing. Then later on, what was in him at his own admission, he believed in divorce. All, his former bishop didn't even believe in it. This is after I ordained him an elder. Amen. After he got those licenses, but the way I had those licenses written, your license become void if you change your teaching. Amen. That's what I put in the license. Oh yeah. That's the way I, I word minister's license. Your license become void and no good if you backslide or cease to stand on the truth of the gospel. Your license is no good. It expires. Amen. That's why when we give brother license, there's a date on it yeah. for renewal. That's right. When I give you a license, I put a renewal on that. That give me time to see whether you're gonna stick with the word. 
And if you see me not renewing your license, that means you ain't coming back up here until you get yourself right. That's right. Some men give out licenses, no expiration date. You gotta protect the church. That's right. Amen. Now he stands for divorce. He was firm against it. Well, at least he pretend he was. He was against flesh and blood in heaven. And for anybody that believed in it. Now he built up what he destroyed. Now he's out here, I'm told. Flesh and blood is in heaven. Even an astronaut need a suit to go in space. The natural body can't breathe in space. No. Why would, why would God take a body of blood in heaven? Blood is for redemption. Who in the world in heaven need to be redeemed? Nobody. Redemption is for us. The human family. Even the Bible says we were not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold. But by the precious blood of Christ Jesus as a lamb. So a lot of time, sometimes bishops need help. And out of hastiness, they ordain. And then regret, and regret it later. And sometimes they're not too hasty. Years go by. Yeah. Amen. If you got a second wife and your first wife is living, we can't ordain you. You live together, not married? Well, we can't ordain you. You homosexual? Should I say any more? Can't ordain you. You are racist? Amen. Let me make an example. Come here, double D, don't you see? Come here, Brother Harris. I'm going to make a brutal raw, hard-hitting, uncompromising, eye-twitching <laughs> example. And Devil D, he's one of those brothers, and I honestly can say, yeah. I wish I had a thousand men like him. Yeah. Yeah. And you dumb black bigots will say, you see that? Pastor Jennings is he kissing up to the white man. He's Uncle Tom and If you a good brother, you a good brother. If you ain't, you just ain't. I won't ordain you if you're a racist. So out of wisdom, what would I do? If I have a white minister, I'm going to see how he minister among those that's not his skin color. And I'm going to see how he minister among those that are his skin color and see is it a slight difference. I would do it with my white brother and I would do it with my black brother. Because if he go into a branch temple throwing off on the white minister, use a black bigot. That's right. And if I don't reprimand him because his skin the same color as mine, then I endorse his bigotry. That's right. Talk to me. So here I have him, if I had him an elder of a church in Wisconsin. Yes. And Minister Harris go to Wisconsin. Yes. Preach a good fiery service. Yes. It, it seemed like everything is hallelujah, amen. Yes. Glory to the Father. Yes. Then he go back to the temple that he's in charge of. Yes. Well, thanks. 
I was in Wisconsin, and everybody in there was white, and hmm. you know how they are. Wait. Wait. What did they do to you? That's right. That's right. That's right. And then he get up and say, well, you know them crackers over that part of First Church. Whoa. Then I'm going to take the Bible and crack him. Crack him. It'll be the same thing if Double D, don't you see? Yes. Is an elder at the church in Wisconsin. Yes. And he go on there and preach and then go among all white brothers and sisters. Yes. Thanks, we had a good time, but uh, some of them niggas got unruly. <laughs> and then he look at you. Man, do you understand? I will have to take the book and rebuke him and rebuke him. But if I only rebuke him and not rebuke him because we both are black, I ain't doing my job. That's right. And I'm having respect the person. Am I right? There is no favoritism in God's church. You don't want to be the type of people that judge someone by their color. Brother Jimmy is one of the new ministers from Atlanta. I don't look at him as Brother Jimmy, the white minister. No. Man, you just Jimmy. Brother Emmanuel from Florida, we're training him in ministry. Where's Brother Carlos? He had to leave? Yeah. Brother Abraham, yeah. Spanish. Yeah. I don't, well, my Spanish brother, Ab for what? Yeah. That's, right. That's just Brother Abraham and Brother Emmanuel. Yeah. 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 Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That's right. Let me deal with this now with Bible. Second chapter of Galatia. Galatians. In the book of Galatians. This sickness came among the apostles. That's right. This sickness came among the apostles. Amen. And they were Holy Ghost filled, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. But there was some prejudice still existing in some. That's right. Listen. In the book of Galatians, chapter 2, and at verse 11. But when Peter was come to Antioch, when Peter came to Antioch, I withstood him to the face. Now, Paul withstood Peter, and yet Peter had the gospel before Paul. Yeah. But right. Paul seen that they, these fellas got out of line. That's right. And something got wrong. That's right. They got that. Amen. Paul wasn't looking at Peter walk with Jesus, talk with Jesus, handled him. Mm -mm. No, no. Paul knew something was wrong that right. should not be and there's some conduct going on that was opposite from the teaching of Jesus that's right Peter I know Jesus taught you in the flesh but he taught me in the spirit and revealed his son in me that I may preach him among the heathen and immediately I conferred not the flesh and blood listen but when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face. Peter came to Antioch. Paul withstood him to the face. Be because. Because. He was to be blamed. He was in fault of what was going on. That's right. Now what happened? For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when oh. they were come. Before certain came from James, mm -hmm. Peter was them. eating with other ethnic groups. That's yeah. right. Gentiles. Peter was just eating with other races. All right? But when they were come. But when they were come, what do you mean? Other Jews. Peter's nationality. When they came. He withdrew and separated himself, fearing oh, them. Let's demonstrate this. Come here back, Double D. Double D, Jimmy, come here. You brothers. Do me a favor, kind of free up your chairs. What about five chairs across here, five brothers? 
Let's put them right here real quick, please. Double D and Jimmy, y'all sit together. Y'all sit together. My sister, that's the usher from Delmar. Come here, sister. I can't remember everybody's name, but come on anyway. Oh, thank the Lord for television. <laughs> Have a seat, sister. Read that again. For before that certain came from James. All right, hold it. Before certain came from James. He did eat with the Gentiles. Peter was eating with the Gentiles. But when they were come, when who? When they were come, come on over here. What happened? He withdrew and separated himself. <laughs> he separated himself, fearing them, fearing them which were of the circumcision. Yeah. Scared of you. Worrying about what y'all gonna think of me. That's right. You know, because I was eating with some white brothers and sisters and I'm worrying about what y'all think. That's right. But yet here the scriptures teach that Jesus died to make one new man. Amen. Do you understand? Right. So you black preachers Go ahead. who separate yourself Separate. to cater to your own kind as if salvation is just too black. You blind Hebrew Israelites. I come from Adam. She come from Adam. He come from Adam. Let, 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 I'm going to demonstrate this much better. Mother, come here. Yes, mother. No, not you. Mother right there. This is your daughter, right? Yes, you. Come on, mother. No, not you. She's coming now. Come on, mother. You'll be all right. God bless your heart. Watch your step. Come on. That's all right. You got your shoes off. You all right. Have a seat. You got holy feet, don't you? Now, mother, what nationality are you? You're not white, you're not black, you're mixed. I'm doing this for a reason. Come here, Sister Janice. Come on up here, child. Come on now. <laughs> Brother Whitty, come here. Give me some more chairs. Now, you, you sit here. No, right there. Where's the dean? I see him. Come on, Dean. Watch yourself. You have a seat right here. Move over, Sister Jennings. You sit where Sister Jennings was. You sit right there. Mm -hmm. Come here, Dave. You know what? Stand up. You switch places. Come on, you get up. Dean, you sit there. You sit here. Yeah, you sit right there. Come here, Kev. Get it right here. Huh? Come here, Marcus and Mark. Have you noticed the shade is turning? You sit here. Come here, son. You sit here. Come, come here. Joshua. Are Edomites. They say these are the children of Esau. And they say only people of color are the people of God. Well, wait a minute. Brother Whitted, who I call the dean, is a black man. But he's what they call an albino. 
So if skin color makes you the child of God or not, then that would mean he's a children of Esau. But he's not. Now, here's the wisdom of God. The nation of Islam said that there's a big head scientist named Yakub. I ain't got you up there because you're bald. <laughs> the Nation of Islam said there's a big head scientist named Yakub. And what Yakub did was went in his laboratory and start grafting. And he first got a black man and abstract from him a brown germ. And when he took the brown germ out, he noticed the next man was lighter. Then lighter. Then lighter. Then lighter, then lighter, then lighter until Yakub supposed to have made the white brothers. You was a big head liar. Have we not all one father? Give chapter and verse, Williams. In the book of Malachi, chapter 2 and at verse 10. Malachi, chapter 2 and verse 10 says, Have we not all? How much? All. How much? All. All of you in front, stand up. Amen. Have we not what? Have we not all? One father. We all got what? One father. Now let me get wrong. These are not crackers. That's right. And these are not a bunch of niggas. That's right. We are one people. That's right. Made by one God. Talk to me. Hallelujah. One Father. The Bible says what? Have we not all? Have we not all? One Father. One God made us. One, one Father. I'm black, but I'm not better than the white. That's right. And the white is not better than me. That's right. God is better than us all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One father. You got so-called apostolics that are racist. That's right. The United Pentecostal Church for years used to brag and boast and use the title that we are the largest white Pentecostal organization. You are a bunch of Pentecostal bigots. Amen. And when you have these racist organizations, if you're a person of color, you will only go but so far in the organization. That's right. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. Yakub. Yeah. A mad hatter. <laughs> That's right. Who head is shaped like the golden notches of McDonald's. My Lord. Not even the Bible talk about some nut named Yakub. And not even the Quran talk about some quack named Yakub. Amen. There's only one creator. Amen. And the Lord is him. Amen. When leadership die, all this poison is liable to come in God's people. That's right. So leadership die, and we have many white Hispanic brothers and sisters. But then if the wrong, the wrong leadership get up here, they're gonna be mistreated. That's true. If he's a racist, he's gonna mistreat them. At less than. That's right. That's right. And vice versa. Yeah. If you get a racist white brother minister to the people, he's going to treat his followers as less than. Only black folk will clean the bathroom. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Use the blacks to cut the, cut the grass and clean the toilets. Yeah. Amen. Give them strenuous work. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to hit you hard. Oh, yeah. I swear a lot of you bigot churches do that got some black followers. You get the blacks to do all the rigid hard work. Yeah. 
I know some of the whites don't break a nail. Yeah. I not only will break your nails, I'll break your hand. That's right. And break your leg. You and then I'll break your whole body with the word of God. That's right. That's right. You that are watching that have lost bishops or pastors. Have you not seen your church drastically change for the worst? Amen. How many gay men and women now who came out the closet free That's right. are now ministers? When Bishop was living, men was in the pulpit act like men. They walked in the pulpit like men. Got in the spirit like a man. Hallelujah. Glory. Yes. Now, Bishop died. Yes. Let the church say man. Yes. Say man again. I thank God for being here. Yes. We're going to run a revival. Just raise your hands and say yeah. That's right. Yes. Amen. 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 Hey, all right, I say. Yes. Why does this madness take place? Because the fear of God is gone. That's right. That's right. And just like Israel rose up to play, if a real man of God died, the play, the wickedness, the folly that's in the people, you know when a man of God is alive, his living just keeps some people from doing some things. That's right. They don't want him to know it. That's right. A pit bull keep you in your place. You let someone put a pit bull, pit bull in front of you, you're going to stand there. Yeah. If you move it, you're going to... You go that way. Ah. Yeah. But if you have no respect for the bite of the pit bull, yeah. you're going to fight him. You yeah. right. Are you getting this? That's right. Let one die. That's right. And another... Take his office. Take his office, his office. or take his bishopric. Bishop. Stop looking at your family and your relatives to be next. Look at scripture. My wife is not the first lady, she's my lady. So if I die, God forbid, and someone pop up with a first lady, the whole congregation should rebel. Yeah. We don't have women preachers here. So if anyone try to even sneak a woman in to give a sermon, everything better rise up. Revert. That's right. Why? You jeopardizing my salvation. And you're challenging my journey to eternal life. Remember the mission of Satan is to turn you away from God by any means necessary. That's right. One of the most slickest ways Satan turn you from God is befriend you. Then you value the friendship above principle of scripture and you take what this fella say because you look at how long y'all been friends. Who cares about friends? Amen. The greatest friend is Christ himself. Amen. Amen. You bishops, your friends have turned you. Your wives have turned you. Men of other religions have turned you. You have put your friendship here and you have got rid of the Lord's doing. I want to encourage all my brother and sisters around the world, holiness is to instruct you to keep God first and you must allow the teaching to get in you and you become settled in it. That's right. Wherein your ears become eligible to try words as mouth doeth meat. You don't say amen to someone because they're your friend and you know they lie. Am I right, I say? 
That's why all ministers must, not, must never allow themselves to get too close to no one in the body of Christ until they compromise your ability to stand for the word. There must be space between you and everybody else. That's right. Never get too close. Because when you find yourself bargaining, you know they're wrong and you won't speak out. You got too close. Oh, yeah. And you know they're wrong. Yeah. To the degree they do something wrong openly and you see them doing it wrong openly, then rebuke them openly that others may fear. Care yeah. not about they're your friend. Amen. You don't jeopardize your soul to keep a friendship. You keep Jesus on your side. If you lose that person, lose him. But you keep Jesus on your side. Am I right? Amen. Hallelujah. The holy book says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves. Give chapter and verse. Acts chapter 20 and at verse 28. Take heed therefore unto, your, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers. What should we do? To feed the church of God, and which he hath purchased with his own blood. Uh -huh. For I know this, after, after my departing shall Paul, grievous the wolves, apostle say, after I die, shall grievous wolves, grievous wolves. He noticed he never just said wolf. Grievous wolves. Grievous. What, what, what kind? Grievous. Grievous what? Grievous wolves. Several, yeah. plural, wolves, vicious wolves, enter in among you. They will come right among you, and when they get among you, what will happen? Not sparing the flock. They won't spare you. They're going to rip apart everything you believe, everything you've been taught. Also, also, of your own selves. But your apostle is dealing with men on the outside that come in, and now you're going to deal with men already here. Also of your own selves. Of what? Your own self. What happened? Shall men arise. Speaking what? Speaking perverse things. For what reason? To, to draw away disciples after them. They're going to speak perverse things so you can follow them. That's right. Therefore. Therefore, what should the church do? Watch. And remember. Amen. What should the church do? Watch out. Watch. That's right. Watch. Have you noticed when we introduce any minister, we stress, listen. Listen. That's right. The Bible says, say amen to the truth. Right. Well, Pastor Jenner, I suppose he's saying something that is true, but I don't understand it. Now, how can you say amen to something you can't comprehend? Right. When it's clear, then you can say amen because you're bearing witness to it. That's right. Listen. Therefore, watch. Pay attention. And remember. Pay attention. Right. Pay attention. Watch. You can't listen at the minister and text at the same time. No. That's right. Pay attention. That's right. Bishop S.C. Johnson died. He built 100 buildings. They had the title church. The whole movement is on its way to hell. Lord, my Lord. Now they say you don't have to speak in tongues. Earrings, wigs, lipstick, jewelry, pants on the women. Lord. Amen. If I die, Amen. even if the Lord show me I'm going to die, then my prayer is that he show me who going to come after me. Right. And if someone come after us and God show me, I will let you know. Yeah. But as a warning to that one, 
if that would be God's plan, you deviate. The size of a gnat's pupil. My prayer has God cut you off in the pulpit in front of the people. Amen. That is my prayer. A man who misleads the people should be cast into hell. That's right. I don't care who don't agree with it. That's my prayer. That God slay him and take him out of the world. Take him out. Because we don't deserve to be led into hell where we left false churches that was already leading us to hell. That's right. You mean to tell me I left these churches because they were leading me wrong? And now you pop up later and sending me to the same hell that I'm trying to escape? May the Lord himself cut you off the earth. That's my prayer for any man that come after me. You refuse to stick to that Bible? I pray that God make you an example and snatch your soul from your body in the pulpit. Amen. So fear can come upon the people. Like Ananias and Sapphire, they die in front of Peter. Amen. Oh, you shouldn't ask that. Did God kill Ananias and Sapphire? Because they lied to the Holy Ghost. They won't make you so better. That's my prayer. Amen. All this work and all this labor. That's right. Spitting up blood, urinating blood. Just to save you. Amen. Preach it, brother. And then a fraud pop up who just won a title. Major Homer, cut him off. Amen. I wouldn't care if it's my blood. I wouldn't care if it's my brother. I wouldn't care if it's my son. Go ahead. You don't stand for that word. May Jehovah cut you off. Amen. When it come to God, I am not that close to nobody. The Bible say, who is my mother, sister, and brother, but he that do the will of my Father which is in heaven. The same. The same. The same. I have no respect to person. Amen. I have no church favorites. Right. My favorite is the Holy Ghost. When you don't know the scripture, you will say, that's mean. There was a law in the Old Testament that no one should handle or touch the altar and the ark, but the priest. And the king took it upon himself and stretched forth his hand to go touch it. And the Bible said his hand withered. God smote him. Aaron and Mary spoke against Moses. God smoked his own sister. And Ananias and Sapphire loved money so much they sold land and kept back part of the money and lied to the apostles and the apostles said you ain't lie to men you lie to God. God killed both of them and they carried them out and buried them. That's right. What is it written for? Our learning. Our learning. I don't want the truth of God to fall in the hands of a no good liar. That's right. That's right. And then all this sound teaching 
just evaporate in you like you ain't been taught nothing. Then all of a sudden, a lie starts spreading. There ain't no hell. It ain't no more baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And then people become too scared to say anything. And yet sit there and tolerate it. And in your heart, you start dying spiritually. You come to church for spiritually, you're dying because all that sugar is in your system now. When you was getting good food, prayers was answered. Felt the power of God. Holy Ghost moved on you. Now the preacher that you saw is dead and your sugar daddy in the pulpit. Now the old mothers now got mini skirts. Old mothers now starting to put nail polish. Young sisters, nail polish. Now wigs start coming. Splits go from your ankle to your hip. Men's hair start getting longer. Sissy's in the pulpit. That's right. Sissy's on the choir. Yeah. Amen. Then nobody say nothing. Preacher don't say nothing. If the preacher don't have a vision from God, he cannot even add to the work that God is blessing us to do. That's right. Not only he can't add to it, he won't even have what it takes to maintain it. It'll fall apart. And you will sit there crying because you see what's happening around you. Crying in tears. Because many of you watch from day one, from the basement to now, where God brought us from. Hallelujah. That's right. Solomon said, Yea, I hated all my labor. I hate all my labor. Some of these bitches, when they died, their wife took over the whole church. Now she called preachers to come in. She took over the whole church. Not only the whole church, she took over the whole church bank account. This is God's money. My wife's name ain't on no bank account. That's right. If I die, what do like my wife and kids? Oh, we're going to take them to court. That property belonged to us. Ain't nothing belong to you. Amen. This is God's work. Amen. Amen. My wife and kids don't think like this. But I know where situations have took place where preachers died and their wives and sons and daughters have took the churches to court and try to take the church money. Try to take the church money, try to take the church property. Man, this is God's church. Don't you let nobody come among you and pull you away from the doctrine of the apostles. That's right. Don't let them just feed you baptism and speaking in tongue. Amen. It's more than that. More than that. Oh, it take God. You gotta dig up everything. Be one, ministers. While I'm alive. Don't be Judas. Because if Judas' spirit is in you, it's gonna come out. Come out. Yes, it will. This is what the Holy Ghost brought here today. Amen. Solomon said, I give you a good doctrine. Hallelujah. Bishops have died. They work, have totally fallen, collapsed. No more believing the doctrine of the apostles. Bishop Bonner. What strictness he had. He didn't have women preachers. That man was firm against women preachers. And was firm against divorce. When Bishop R.C. Lawson was living, Bishop Bonner was Lawson's chauffeur. 
Lawson ordained Bishop Johnson and made him overseer of the state of Pennsylvania. Johnson left Lawson in 1930. Bonner dead now. So you got some of the bishops. Talking about we're going to reconsider the divorce question. Oh, yeah. Lord. They're fighting now. Some of the bishops of the so-called churches of our Lord Jesus Christ is trying to bring divorce in and they're trying to bring women preachers in. Oh, yeah. Lord. I remember I heard a story about Bonner, about his wife. His wife wanted to preach. And they said at one convention, she had the microphone supposed to be testifying and was going too long. Bonner got up in the pulpit in front of all them thousands of people and snatched the microphone from his wife's hands and told her, sit down! <laughs> no woman in here did not even sound like a woman preacher. This is why we teach our women how to testify. The Bible tells a woman in 1 Peter, the third chapter, you ought to have a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God, a great price. So therefore, no woman should get up testifying 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes long with your voice loud like a man quoting scripture. That's right. Short, precise, to the point, and sit out. Brothers that lead prayer service, when you see them going too long, stop acting like some coward looking back at me. Do your job and sit them down. That's right. That's right. Amen. Let's tell them. That's enough, sister. Now, if they're visitors, they don't know no better. But still, tell them politely. Sister, you're testifying too long. You're going to have to stop. Just have to stop now. That's right. Let all things be done how? It ain't no one should be giving you a church card inviting you to evangelize. Right then that ought to tell you something going wrong. No something should be getting up. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen again. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. To the house of the God of Jacob. He's going to take us up his ways. That's right. That's right. No. No. I know some of you don't like this, and if you've been listening to me, you know I don't care if you don't. First Peter, chapter three, chapter three, verse four. Amen. That goes for you, brothers, too. When you testify, there ain't time for you to take a sermon. No. Say what God done for you. Sit down. Why well, keep standing saying you can't tell it all, but you keep trying? You can't tell it all. We know it. So stop trying. First Peter chapter 3 beginning at verse 4. Everybody all right? Amen. This is a good Holy Ghost teaching today. First Peter chapter 3 and at verse 4. This is a good doctrine laying a good foundation for the church. That's right. All right? But let it be the hidden man of the heart. Let it be the hidden man of the heart. That which is not corruptible. And that which is not corruptible. Even the ornament. Even the ornament. Of a meek and quiet spirit. How do God look at it? Which is in the sight of God of great price. Great price. Amen. That means he values it. Values that. Pray for your brother. Amen. May God give us long life. Amen. 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 We want the ministers to stay on point with the book. No deviation. That's right. Absolutely no deviation. We got to stay on point with the book. That's it. Feed them that bread that come from heaven. That's right.